I'm in the middle of building a mobile base for my table saw and that's something I'll show you in more detail in a separate video sometime. For now, I want to join you see bits of timber here. A piece of 4x2 and a bit of 5x2 in a T-shape like this. To do that, I'm going to use what's known as a, a T-halving joint, which essentially is a lap joint. So I'm going to cut away half the material from here. And also there'll be a notch in this one for that to fit into. Okay, so using a square and a tape measure, I've already marked out the lines for the width of the housing. And with the square again, I can just place the timber carefully between those lines. Just make sure it's where it needs to be. And I can take a sharp marking knife with the bevel against the timber and just carefully describe an accurate line on both sides without moving the wood. Again, using a square and a knife, I can transfer these lines round to the edges, like so. And I've also preset my marking gauge to half the thickness here of the material. And I'll use that to mark the depth. I'm also going to mark the end grain on this one. And that'll help me when I'm going to. Uh, set the saw like so. I'm using my sliding compound miter saw to make these cuts because it's the most convenient tool I have in the workshop. There are several other ways, ways you could do this, including cutting them by hand. What I'm going to do, first of all, is lower the blade down until the lowest point of the teeth sits about just above that line I marked earlier. On this saw, you can limit the cutting depth by swinging this stop into place and adjusting the screw until the depth of cut is at your desired position. So, I'll lower it there. It's actually not far off. Let me just tweak it slightly. I'll give that a try. I'm going to start by making two um, shoulder cuts, both here and here, to define the width of the joint. And after that, I'll make a series of parallel cuts through the bulk of the waist. If you're doing a lot of repeat work and batch work with the same size components, you could set a length stop both here and also there to define the, the width of the joint you're cutting, rather than working to a pencil line each time. Whenever you make trenching cuts like this on a miter saw, it's important to fit a spacer behind the workpiece. This is so that when you bring the blade down, as the, timber, as the blade passes through the timber, you get a clean parallel cut all the way through. find these thin slithers will you know, break out. Well, some of them will. I wouldn't normally attempt this with the hinges already fitted and I'm being a bit lazy there. But also my chisel isn't as sharp as it could be. It works okay on softwood. But yeah. Okay. 
Let's hit the other half of the joint, let's just see if it fits. See that no side to side play, that's about perfect I'd say. But I still want to cut the bare face tenon on this end. Again, it's the same method of the marking knife and the square to set the length of this tenon, like so. Just marking down that edge with the bevel against the timber. And with my marking gauge, I've also scribed the line around the perimeter. Now I could, if I wanted to, just cut the shoulder here on my chop saw and remove the bulk of the waste from here with my bandsaw. But it's currently without a blade fitted and I'm trying to do some maintenance on that so I'm going to use a chop saw again. Just one quick tip for you. When you are uh, doing a bit of pairing work like this, finessing a joint, you can use the back face of a chisel provided it's flat. And also the edge here as a kind of straight edge to suss out where the low spots are and where the highs are as well. In this case having a slight hollow in the centre is okay because the two surfaces will be pressed together you won't see that. Now for the moment of truth. Quite tight. Well, you can see there's a bit of a, a lump here I could remove, maybe that'll bring it down flush then. But otherwise it's good for width, quite good for length as well. I mean if that joint was clean there, was flat and perfect, you could conquer that um, discrepancy there by taking a hand plane to it, just maybe taking a few shavings off the top surface. For me this is almost good enough uh, for a workshop project anyway. And I've decided to screw this one in place. If you don't want to use screws, you don't want a visible fixing, you can just glue and clamp this on a piece of furniture, for example. Um, you could dowel it. There are several ways you could do to reinforce the joint. Before I go and get back to making some sawdust again, I have one final tip for you on setting the router. You can see with these hinges, they're set into a recess cut into the timber. And I mark the lines with a marking knife and square and a marking gauge for this one but the, most of the waste which are removed with the router bit. The trouble with doing this sometimes it can be tricky to set the cutting depth easily but what I do, I have a quick simple tip to show you. I take the router with the cutter already fitted, plunge it down so it's flush with the workpiece, like so, lock it off. Then I take the hinge I'm going to use, set it between the, the depth stop here, lower the plunge bar for the depth stop until it's flush and holds it in place. Tighten that. If I release the plunge of the router. Now when I plunge down the full depth, I'll know that this setting here between the cutter and the base is exactly equal to the thickness of my hinge. So thank you for watching my short video on making a simple uh, tea halving joint. I'll be back with you very soon to show you how this uh, mobile base comes together. I hope you've learned something new, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you want to, please click like, please subscribe and I'll see you again soon.